Yeah. A lot of people don't believe in the power of learning a language with video games, and I think that's a shame because I've been doing it for almost eight years now. And I've already made a video about learning with the Switch, but learning isn't really restricted to any single console. So I thought I would continue the list with the 3DS. So go ahead, subscribe if you're interested in more of these in the future and link to the video where you can find whatever links. This video is split into parts. So the first part, I'm talking about learning tips, like how to study with games, what's helpful, what's not helpful. And then we're getting into the list and that's sorted by beginner, intermediate and advanced recommendations. And then at the end is the best game at any level for you. Timestamps can be found wherever timestamps are found. Ty's tips. Number one, calm down. You don't have to go crazy adding every word in existence to your custom flashcards. Don't bother, it's kind of excessive. It's not really a bad thing to do, but it's not fun after a while either. So go for it, add maybe five, 10 words, whatever your limit would be, and then just play the game, enjoy, it's fine. Even if you don't fully understand everything. Because keep in mind, what's the point of practicing with video games is it's getting reviews of language you already know and then kind of getting exposure to new words. So even if you're not making custom flashcards all the time, it's fine, don't worry. So when I first started studying Japanese, probably the first four or five years maybe, I made flashcards when I was playing games and I would stop after I got tired. So, you know, between five and maybe 15, I would do sometimes. It would be the kind of goal. But recently, in the past about two, three years, I've not made any flashcards. So I think both are valid approaches and you should mix and match, it's fine. If you do decide to make flashcards, remember, keep them simple. Because the simpler they are, the quicker they are to make. And that means more exposure to the game and more exposure to language, more review. It's just way better. So just add like the sentence you found it in, the word from that sentence that is new to you, the kind of reading and uh, that's kind of all you need. Just keep going then. Though sometimes I do like to add where I found it from is actually really fun because I'll remember where I found words I learned like five years ago. I remember, I, oh, I learned this word from Animal Crossing. So that's fun. One of the first words I learned was cheese it. And that was from Animal Crossing. That, that was fun. That was fun. Number two, lean towards games with kanji and not like only hiragana, katakana. Just Despite what you might think initially, kanji is actually way better for beginners. I would actually recommend it the most for beginners because it's going to be in kana. So you have like the definition. There's going to be like 20 definitions for some words. You'd be like, which what? The <laughs> but if you have kanji, then it's much more clear. You can at least narrow it down. So it's much better. And then if you don't know what you're doing still, just come ask in my discord. I can help you out. If you're struggling looking up kanji, I have a video, I don't know, right here maybe. I don't see what I do after, I don't know. But the simplest way to look up kanji that I personally use like all the time when I'm playing games is get Google Translate out, take a picture of it, copy and paste from that picture and bring it into like jisho.org or whatever phone dictionary you have. Don't trust Google Translate, it's still not very good. But it's great for like yoinking the text and the kanji. So that's how I generally look stuff up, but video for more details and options there. Number three, don't forget your core studies. Games are fantastic for learning and they offer a lot of great exposure for a lot of convenience too, right? You can just play them in your house. You don't have to be talking to anyone. You don't have to schedule anything with anyone. And it's really enjoyable because you're just playing a game. It's fun. I love games, you know, but there is one important thing because games do have some unnatural language. and. I've actually had like my language partners before. They, they, they've kind of laughed maybe at me, maybe with me because I sound like a video game character. So you do have to be careful. So course studies are still very important, especially ones that will make you sound natural. Not textbooks. Stop with the textbooks. So along with sounding unnatural, you can also, especially with video games, there's not a lot of like listening practice and whatever listening there is, it's very overpronounced. So it's good to have a good core resource that has both good listening, not textbooks, and natural sentences, not textbooks. So I get around that by using Native Shark, which gives me exposure to natural language instead of video game language. So I can still kind of sound natural when I'm actually speaking, but I can get lots of uh, comprehension from both of those. They also have really good audio on the website, like native audio, like here, peep this. Uh, and yeah, sadly, I struggled 
listening to Japanese because Native Shark didn't exist when I first started. So it was pretty rough when people would talk to me and I didn't know what they were saying. Like I passed N1 and I still couldn't understand what people were trying to tell me in like a normal situation. It was, oh, don't, don't do what I did for that, just, just please. You can check out Native Shark below. Yeah, they got the description thing and people who you sign up with my link get extra free trial and the first 50 people get $60 off their subscription with the code and things down below. It helps support my channel. Thank you. Okay. Number four, don't be afraid to drop a game and come back in say three to six months or even longer. The point of studying games is it to be fun, to get more exposure and to have fun doing it, right? So if it's stressing you, stop, it's okay. <laughs> Just stop playing, come back after you've done more course studies, study for another whatever, two months or whatever, find a different game that's easier, and then keep progressing, come back later. It was actually my favorite way to measure progress. I did this plenty of times and I would come back and be like, oh, I'm so much better at Japanese now. This is, maybe it's still not easy, but this is so much easier. But either way, keep in mind, especially as a beginner starting off and in your first game, your first book, your first anything that's kind of a native material, you're gonna have a tough time and it's gonna, the tough time will kind of reset a little bit every different game or material you kind of start off with. But the good thing is, is that material will reuse a lot of words. So once you get over the initial like tough spot, tough say what, two, five percent of the game or whatever you're playing, then it's gonna be a lot easier to do. So don't let it stress you. Take your time, be patient with yourself, it's okay. And just keep in mind that learning Japanese is a long process. It's gonna take a few years to do. I have a video about that here if you wanna take a look at it. One last important thing before we start the list is that the 3DS is region locked. That means if you have a US 3DS or a European 3DS, you cannot play Japanese games on it and most games don't have language settings, so you would actually need to buy a Japanese 3DS and then buy Japanese games. The only game that I think does have a language setting would probably be Pokemon. Just keep in mind, a Japanese game will need a Japanese 3DS in order to run it. You can get one from like Amazon, probably like eBay, any used game like online shop will probably have some. There's also Book Off, which I believe ships internationally so that's worth taking a look at too. That's one of the big secondhand stores in Japan. Or maybe on your next trip to Japan, you go to a book off, which I highly recommend. It's great for finding cool games. And then you just get a 3DS there. They're usually pretty inexpensive, maybe 6,000, 7,000 yen, depending on what it is and how new or whatever condition it is. Also keep in mind that the 3DS eShop is closed now, so you will have to buy physical games. Again, you could probably find them on eBay or whatever the eBay equivalent is where you live. Or just go to Book Off and get a ton of games in Japan. That's what I did on my first vacations. All right, time to get into the list. Remember, we got beginner first, intermediate, then advanced, and then I will give the recommendation for the best game at any level for you. Do keep in mind, these are all rough estimates. So if you've got a lot of experience playing a certain type of game, that's gonna be easier for you on this list versus maybe one that's less familiar, that's gonna be harder for you on this list. This is completely subjective. This is my take. <laughs> beginner, Atsumare Doubutsu no Mori. I love this game with all of my heart. <laughs> this and the game I'm gonna talk about next were the first games I played when I first started studying Japanese. It's great because it has everyday language in it. There's furigana for all the kanji, so it's easier to read. And you can also take a screenshot you are pressing L and R. Like if your brain's starting to go and you just wanna play the game but you don't wanna read anymore, you can just screenshot stuff and then look it up later. Usually when I did that, I never looked it up later, but that's okay. But yeah, chill vibes, love this game, play it. Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire X Y. If you're watching a video about learning Japanese, playing games, odds are you know how to play Pokemon, which is gonna make this a lot easier for you. Even if you don't know what anybody is talking about, it's gonna be a lot easier. Because I'm assuming you know how to play it, this game is in the beginner area. If you don't know how to play it, it might get bumped up to intermediate uh, because there's not really a lot of hoodie Sometimes the language is a little wonky, but it doesn't matter in order to actually play the game. Just note, be sure to set the game to kanji, not kana, because that's going to help you a lot in the long run, though it, it, it might feel a little slower. You're going to be thanking yourself in the long run, I promise. And again, check out my video on how to look up kanji. It's worth the extra effort, I promise. Zeru no Densetsu. 
Kamigami no Triforce 2. I love saying these names in Japanese. Oh my god.、Uh, this one's really fun. It's a straightforward Zelda game, and there's a good amount of dialogue. It's got Hurigana. It's just a, it's just a fun play. Give it a shot. The sequel is also、uh, pretty good too, but I've actually only played like five minutes, so I don't know if I can recommend it yet. Pokemon Cho Fushigi no Danja. So, this one has Hurigana. The series is generally easy across all of its entries. So, like, if you play a different version, it's probably fine. It usually leans towards like simpler language. And what I like about it is there's lots of breaks. So, it kind of has this gameplay loop of like dialogue, dungeon, and then dialogue again. And then you kind of chill in town, and then there's more talking. So, there's like always breaks. So, you can do just like just a single dialogue session for your studies, and then you can just play. And then end it there. If you're a little tired, you can just play the game. It's, it's really nice. Mario and Luigi RPG Paper Mix. I've played like probably 20 minutes of this, but the beginning language was fairly simplistic. Probably a good game for beginners. The comedy was there. It was, it was a good game. I just didn't end up playing the rest of it for whatever reason. I should totally play that game now. Man. Had 3D Gone on as well, so my, why not give it a shot, you know? Any Kirby game. Hoshi no Kabi, it's gonna be good. This one's definitely if you're just trying to relax though. Like, there's basically no dialogue ever, except if you press pause when you have an ability. So,、uh, challenge mode, try to describe the ability and then see what they say. Why not? Intermediate. Zelda no Densetsu, Toki no Akarina. I didn't grow up playing this game. So, I don't have rose tinted glasses for this, unlike a lot of people I've talked to. So, since we're in intermediate now, the language is on the harder side. You might get confused on how to play this game because, like, how to play this game, it's done with text boxes instead of like game mechanics and like things that, hey, go here or do this. It's like you gotta make sure you understand the text boxes. <laughs> And yeah, and just old game design that's a little confusing sometimes. So, personally,、mm, yeah, it's alright. But if you like the game and you know how to play it, yeah, I think it's probably a good choice. It's a good game.、Um, there's some specific farming language. It's whatever, like old small village language, too. But you get past that, it's fine. And then you can learn lots of like vegetables and stuff. And it's fun. It's just a good game. Slice of life games are always good. Luigi Mansion 2. This one's got a lot of jokes, so the higher level you are, the more you might appreciate them. But overall, the language is about intermediate, and、uh, the names are funny. Like, the Oji san's name is Oyama. <laughs> Come on. Fire Emblem Kakse. I love this game. This is actually one of my favorite games, so I'm, I'm probably pretty biased here. But. The gameplay is nice. You have that dialogue gameplay dialogue loop, like I talked about with Pokemon Fushigi no Dungeon. But this is definitely on the upper area of intermediate. But I did play this pretty early on in my studies. There's actually a website that has all the dialogue, so you can actually copy and paste just from your browser. And it's a lot easier than trying to get Google Translate and get your phone out and blah, blah, blah. So it's pretty good. Recommend it. But I will elaborate on this when we talk about the best game to play at any level. Advanced. This one's kind of the same deal as the last one.、Uh, just the villages are more varied, so I might recommend it more just to get like kind of more language exposure. But you know, any Bokujo Monogatari game is fun, so I would play any of them. It's fine. Rune Factory 4. This one's kind of in the same vein as Bokujo Monogatari, but. It's a little bit tougher because there is a lot of fighting language as well, and the characters kind of speak a little bit older to match the fantasy vibes more. It's worth a shot, but there's no hirigana, and sometimes the kanji throws fists. See what I'm talking about? Pokemon Sun Moon. This one I thought about putting in the intermediate, but honestly, this is not your usual Pokemon game. And I remember, I think I was probably around N2 level when I started playing this. And、uh, it was rough because the game was so new and they needed to explain like everything, how new it was. And the dialogue, oh my God, there's so much dialogue. The first, like, the first part of the game, you're like, you talk for like 30 minutes, especially if you're reading slower, it's gonna be more than that. And then you do like, you walk to like a new house, and then there's another 30 minute conversation, and then you like walk to a new house, 
and then there's another 30 minute conversation and then you do like one Pokemon battle and then there's another 30 minute conversation and then you like walk five steps outside of the building you did the Pokemon battle in and then there's another 30 minute conversation. Drive me up the wall. <laughs> oh my God. So if you like the game and you've played it before, yeah, go ahead. It's fine. But if you don't want to read years of just dialogue, Maybe give it a pass. Maybe do the other Pokemon games. No, I'm saying. Fire Emblem Ifu. So this one is similar to Kakusei, but I think it's a little bit tougher. The story's a little less engaging, so it could be my bias as well. But I feel like overall the language is a little bit harder. The story's a little bit longer. Um, it's good though, especially if you like Fire Emblem games. It's fine. Yeah, go ahead. And lastly, Fire Emblem Echoes. This one's nice because it actually reads stuff aloud to you. And I think there's a dialogue option. You can actually rewind and have them say it again. So that's really nice. It's a lot. It's it's uh, very helpful for looking up words because you can just listen and type it. But it is definitely on the harder side. So be cautious. But, you know, feel free if you want to try it. Try it. When I did go through it, like, what, say four years ago or something, it was on the difficult side for me. I tried it again recently. It was fine. So definitely more advanced. More advanced for sure. But it's good practice, especially if you like Fire Emblem games, it'll be on the doable side, I'd say. <laughs> okay, so that was the list. Hopefully there's something cool. Definitely feel free to give them a shot no matter where you are. But just keep in mind, some stuff's going to be easier. Some stuff's going to be harder based on where you are in your studies. But now let's talk about the best game. So the best game to play at any level for you is your favorite game. What's your favorite 3DS game? Have you played it like three times? Awesome. Do it in Japanese now. You're familiar with this story. You know exactly how to play the game. You probably have all the little treasure locations memorized by heart. It's all good. So do it in Japanese where the only thing that you're fighting against is the language, not the monsters, not the game mechanics that you don't know how to do. No, you got this on lock. Just go do it in Japanese now. And I think this is a good idea. So even if there's a game that you didn't see on this list and it's one that you've played, you should play that one because there's so many games that I've tried before. For example, Yokai Wochi, I have played when I was a beginner and the language was actually pretty doable. But once we got to the game mechanics and they started explaining those tutorials are really tough to understand in Japanese, especially as a beginner. So I actually dropped it because of that. But if you know how to play Yokai Wochi, then go do that, because that's actually a pretty good game for Japanese if you know how to play it. But yeah, just vibe, play what games you want to play. You're going to be all right. It's not a big deal. And that's what I was talking about when I played Fire Emblem Kakusei because it was just my favorite game. I already played it like three times in English. <laughs> so I knew the story. I knew what was going on. It was all good. I knew how to play the game. I knew what strategies I wanted to use. The only thing I was dealing with was the language that was new. It was very helpful. So yeah, if you're stressed, put it down, come back in three to six months, whatever. Continue with your core studies, pick a different game. It's fine. Don't worry about it. So that was the list. Thank you for watching. Come say hi in my Discord. Come ask me questions if you want more specific recommendations or just whatever. You have a question while you're playing the game. You have a question about this, something in this video. Check out my Discord and go check out the videos around here somewhere. How long does learning Japanese take? How do you look up kanji and stuff? Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. Nobody can say that name well. It's fine. <laughs>